Welcome to the Women Empowerment Awards podcast, where we firmly believe that we rise by lifting others. The Women Empowerment Podcast is a platform for women to share their personal stories and experiences, trials and triumphs, to have their voices heard, to promote, inspire, and motivate other women. We want to share the journey of women leaders and entrepreneurs from all industries and sectors who have made an outstanding impact in our society and empower others to do the same. The Women Empowerment Awards Gala is being held Wednesday, September 21st at the Shangri-La Hotel in Toronto. Although the gala is now sold out, you can still grab your tickets to the after-party networking event where you can meet over 250 highly influential and inspiring individuals individuals. Grab your tickets today at eventbrite.com or go to our website, which is www.woea.ca and let's celebrate together. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Women Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Gideon, and it is an absolute pleasure today to introduce my guest, founder and president of Summer Fresh Salads, Susan Nerchowski. Susan, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, Courtney, thank you. What an honor. Well, I've really looked forward to this. I've really looked forward to interviewing you. And thank you so much for making the time. I know you've got a very busy schedule, but we do have a half an hour for this. And I, there's a lot I want to cover. So let's jump in if that's okay. Sounds great. Let's do it. All right. So I love to learn a little bit about where people grew up, how they grew up. If you can just let us in a little bit on early life for Susan, and I suppose how you think that contributed to shaping who you are today. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up in Downsview in the north end of Toronto, Macedonian background. My, both my mom and my dad are Macedonian. They both have by degrees from Polish universities, that good European, Eastern European, hardworking family. Education was instilled in us. I went to the University of Toronto, studied chemistry and mathematics. I just had like a normal family. It was my mom, my dad, and my sister. We've got a very close family network. We always sat down for dinner. We always were able to be very open with our parents and, and vice versa. Wow, that's amazing. And do you feel that that close family bond contributed to the strength of what you're doing now and how you're able to lead a company and all that sort of thing? Absolutely. Our parents made us believe in ourselves and they really empowered what we believed in and really were our backbone. So I feel if you've got a backbone, you can accomplish anything. Stars are the limit. Exactly. Now I have a question because it's been a little bit of a pattern with some of my other guests. Are you the firstborn by any chance? I am. Yes. A typical firstborn, yep. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be the theme. All of these amazing women leaders. So Really? Yes. Yeah, oh, so far. Yeah. And I'm a Leo to, to top. So All firstborn right. and a Leo doesn't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. When we look back, just to do a bit of reflection, do you think there's anybody in your life that has been particularly pivotal, either current in your life or somebody in your past? Absolutely. My mom has been extremely helpful to me. She's very open-minded, very forward-thinking. If you needed somebody to run question by or a situation or a problem, so she is still very helpful in terms of helping me my thinking and problem solving. There's always a solution. Let's sit down chit chat about it and go forward. I'm also very close with my sister, Mary, who at least I can shoot the shit with. If there's any issues with, I can discuss things with. I'm very open. I'm a true talker. If there's a problem, I love to discuss it. I'm one of those people that gets home, runs by my day for the first 30 minutes, and then I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> yes. Get that off your chest, and then you can move on. Yeah. Okay. I'm a true believer in if there's an issue, let's discuss it, because there's always a solution. So yeah, I love that approach. Just tackle things head on. Don't skirt around. And like you said, there is usually a solution to these issues. Absolutely. Yep. I know a lot of people keep that negative energy in. You want to be surrounded by positive energy and you want to come across with that positive energy. And sometimes the big problem is really a tiny problem. So let's just get it resolved. Yeah. And communication, I think, is probably so pivotal when you're running a company like yours. Absolutely. I, I talk about communication in every aspect of every division in our organization. So if the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, it's not great. <laughs> That's for sure. 
So speaking of your company, can you tell us a little bit more about it and how everything began? Yeah, in 1991, I felt that there was a need in the marketplace for fresh prepared salads and fresh prepared foods. Came up with technology to preserve vegetables naturally with no additives, no preservatives, no MSG. Remember, 31 and a half years ago, nobody knew what a prepared salad was. And unless you went to a great restaurant, were you able to get good quality food? So I felt that a consumer should be able to go into a grocery store and get everyday great food that was fresh and natural. We would make at home or a great chef would create. So things like a pasta salad or an amazing potato salad or a fantastic sub and grain salad was not available then. So it was a lot of tender, loving care, creating the recipes and really knocking on a lot of doors and showing the retailers or the specialty food stores or the restaurants that you don't need to hire a chef behind that counter or in the kitchen. You can purchase summer fresh products. They're easy, they're consistent, and they come in. Yes, exactly. Now I heard this was something that you started with, was it with your mom and your sister? Yeah, my mom was my backbone. Together we created the recipes. She would help me chop the vegetables. I would put the recipes together, mix them. And then when you've got a one person operation, you'll get anybody. So it was like my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, whoever went okay. over, I was like, help me, please. Yeah. Wow. So it was a real family effort to get everybody involved and to grow. Yeah, it really was. When you can't afford to pay for labor, you ask your friends and family for favors. And they were definitely there by my side, 150% of the way. And then one thing led to another. We opened up a 3,000 square foot facility. We hired the employees and then we just started to grow from there. And so was your vision always to be in the grocery stores? Was that kind of your vision from day one? Or where did you think you would be? Yeah, I came from a corporate food environment. I wanted to create a corporate type of general foods establishment. We ran the business as professional as we can. We were the first salad manufacturer to, to be federally inspected. So we had a full-time inspector on site. We have all sorts of accreditations like being organically certified, kosher, FDA approved. So yeah, we wanted to make sure that we were a first class food processing operation. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And so what I love about you too, what I've heard you say before is that food is fashion. And so I love food. I love fashion. But how does this relate to Summer Fresh? Yeah, food is fashion is one of our registered trademarks as the fashion industry's got their winter, spring, summer runway of clothes and colors and loose blouses or tops. You're always going to have your black pants and white shirt with maybe a different tie. Same with food. You're always going to have your staples that you like to eat on a weekly basis. But what's new and fun? Is it that dip? Is it that eggplant flavor? Is it that baba ganoush? Is it a roasted garlic hummus? Is it a Greek pasta feta? So we came up with new product development twice a year. We used to come up with four times a year, but the stores couldn't handle all the innovations. Now we come up with innovation twice a year and come up with certain trends and what's hot, what's not, what's exciting and make sure that consumers are aware of all the healthy foods that are available to you. Exactly. No, I really love that. And I love how you are so innovative with what you do. I was at the store the other day and I tried the Everything bagel hummus, actually, that is out right now. Very yeah. good. Very delicious. I love Thank that. You. Yeah. <laughs> it's got good texture. It's got good flavor. Yeah. Exactly. So with all of this, building your company where you are today, I'm sure there's been some hiccups and there's been some challenges. So what have you found to be a big challenge along the way? And I guess, how did you overcome that? Oh, there's challenges every day, every day of my life. That's just, that's what makes life so exciting and never a dull moment. I've always learned from my mistakes. Keep in mind, for every successful product that we've launched, we've had 10 failures. You learn from the failures, either you were too ahead of your time with regards to a particular flavor or it just didn't work out or consumers weren't ready for it. You try to understand why that flavor wasn't accepted. Learn from your mistakes. Yes, exactly. And that's interesting that you say the market wasn't ready for it. My husband, he's Lebanese, and he was saying when he grew up and was at the grocery store, like there's certain things you couldn't get. You couldn't get plain yogurt. You couldn't get pre-made hummus, all this sort of stuff. So the market does evolve, it changes, and it really seems like that's where you have to pay attention to, to see what should I bring into the market now? What are they ready for? What are they not ready for, right? Absolutely. Growing up in Toronto, Italian food was gourmet and Asian Chinese food was gourmet, but now you've got Northern Italian, Southern Italian, different types of sauces. 
Yeah. We've got different types of Asian food, different types of Chinese food. That's mainstream now, but 30, 40 years ago, that was specialty gourmet. And it moving forward, flavors like yuzu and different types of salsas, different types of condiments will be more of a mainstream as opposed to specialty today. Yes, exactly. COVID was a challenge for many people personally and with businesses and things like that. So how did Summerfresh manage through COVID and how did Susan manage through COVID? Good question. COVID was interesting. When COVID struck, I was in Florida. When uh, Trudeau announced Canadians come home, I thought we'd come home for two weeks and it was going to be over. My daughter was stuck in Peru for a couple of weeks on a school trip. Yeah, it was, I try to keep it all together. People were flipping out at work. Are we going to be, are we going to get COVID? Nobody knew exactly what was going on, but we put certain procedures in place. Having a biology background and living through SARS, we implemented masks in our offices and in our plants way back in January. We're a food facility. We made sure that sanitation hygiene was extremely important to us, not only in our plants, but also in our offices. And we put certain procedures in place to make sure that every single one of our employees felt safe. I know getting food was very difficult. We put food boxes together for all 700 employees. And every Thursday and Friday, they would take a bundle of fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, legumes, grains, rice, pasta, bread, eggs, home. We made sure that everybody felt safe and they had the necessities of life to survive. And together, sales, marketing, production, we met on a daily basis and reviewed whatever issues we had to make sure that we were overcoming all those hiccups. We didn't know what to expect. Stores were closing down, restaurants were closing down, deli counters were closing down. But together through communication, we met with the inside sales team, the outside sales team. We were on the phone with our customers to find out what's going on. And together we made it work. Not yeah. easy, extremely difficult. We were extremely agile. I think the new word was pivoting. We pivoted in 55 different directions, but together, I think I called more meetings than anybody wanted to have, but it was important that everybody understood what was going on. What were the sales reps saying? What were customers saying? What our supply chain was saying? What was going on in our plant? So we made sure everybody knew exactly what was going on and how we were going to move forward. And so through these challenges, because sometimes I see these challenges as also opportunities to learn new things and to grow. Was there any moments of growth or enlightenment for your company or even personally for you? Yeah, people I believed that were strong and were going to move forward with the company. They were like jello and they didn't know what to expect. And they were resigning or they were crying and there was concerns with them. But Again, we were able to sit down, speak to them a lot. We didn't know. We were definitely in a crisis situation, but together we made it work. We changed, you know, operations a bit. We changed what people were doing a bit and we made it work. And I say that a lot of us, we did a work from home schedule. We were all treading water. Everybody was doing what they had to do. Did I know what Teams was two and a half years ago? No, it was just starting to come to fruition. But let me tell you, I know it quite well now. So it made us kind of jumpstart technology a lot quicker. And as I said, we were all treading water. And I think with communication and really understanding what was what we thought was going on and actually was going on, we made it work. Exactly. So you have been nominated for a Women Empowerment Award. So first and foremost, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm also interested to know the word empowerment. What does that mean to you? Good question. I love, I love treating people the way I like to be treated. It's not about the power. It's about allowing the team members to really speak out and come up with ideas. And then together as a team, we're able to move forward. I've learned, and my team always says, I'm a great listener. I may not agree with what you know, they say, but I do listen and then react accordingly. I'm only as good as my team and I'm grateful for the great team that I've got. Yes, that's true. That's true. And I've always heard hire people who are even better than you because that just helps lift you up and it helps lift up the company. Is that something that you believe in? Absolutely. When I started Summer Fresh, my dad said, surround yourself with great team members. People are going to know more than you and you're not going to know everything. And that's what I've done. 
And I think, and I know that's why we're extremely successful. I don't know everything. And if I don't, I'll ask, but I can bring in all that great talent that's available. Yes. So I've heard you speak a lot about your family. I mentioned your dad, your daughter. I know you're the mother of a girl and I'm a girl mom myself. And I'm just so fascinated and interested to know, how did you manage building this huge company and balance the family life because your daughter sounds so important and such a huge part of your life. And I know that from speaking to you previously as well. How did you manage it all? Oh, I don't know. Great support. Yeah, my <laughs> daughter is definitely my baby. Summer Fresh was my baby before I actually had my daughter, Stephanie. But then my daughter comes first and fourth most. Having solid roots as a family. I'm an old fashioned mom. I, I believe in being a part of my daughter's world. I would drop her off at school every single day. I think as long as you have great time management and you've got a great infrastructure in place, you can do it both. But you have to also have a supporting husband, surrounding great friends that will help you. I can't do what I do today and I can't be the person that I am today without my husband Chris's help and my entire family. My mom and my dad and my sister and her family would and still do help me along. It takes a, what do they say? It takes a village to, no, it takes a village to raise a child. It really does. I can't be there all the time. I've got a great support team and I'm not afraid to ask for support. Yeah. And that's definitely helped along the way. So don't be afraid to ask for help, basically. No, and you know what? You can't be everywhere at once, but if you organize yourself accordingly, then you can. If I would drop my daughter off at school and I would start my morning off at 9.30 in the office, but I get up at four o'clock in the morning every day to catch up on my emails. Wow. Yes. So what do you think is one of the most important lessons you've tried to teach your daughter? Integrity. I'm a true believer. If you say something, you have to follow through with it and finish it off. If you're, you say you're going to be at home at five o'clock, then if you're running late, then call and say, I'm sorry, but I'm running late. Or if I'm going to, I have to finish this assignment that's due tomorrow, then it's important that you finish this assignment when it's due. Because in life, there are timelines. You've got to be the person that you say you're going to be. And I believe integrity is extremely Extremely important. It is for me and it's extremely important for my family. And that's the way I raise my daughter. And that's the way, you know, I manage my team members at Summerfresh. Yes, I really love that. I think that's a that's very powerful. And so as a woman in business, and you've been in business now for quite some time with your company, how long did you say again, Susan? 31 years? 31 and a half years, yep. Wow. So how do you feel that the climate surrounding women in business has changed since you started? And do you still feel that there are areas of opportunity that us as a society can do better? It's changed. It's not easy being, you know, a female or a young girl starting, you know, a food company or starting a business. I believe your integrity and your honesty and really creating a brand for yourself is extremely important. Nothing is given to you. Nothing is really easy. But if you start chipping away slowly and surely you'll definitely be able to be to rise and shine. I had to prove myself. I'm still proving myself. I'm only as good as my last sale. After 31 and a half years, people believe in you. Yeah, proving yourself and a lot of hard work, I would imagine. Oh, there's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears, a lot of 20 hour days, seven days a week. It's not easy, but I'm a true believer in loving what you do. And I say that to, you know, my daughter, um, you know, when she's got to pick her courses at school, take the courses you love and you enjoy because it's like playing. And I say to everybody at Summer Fresh, I know there's going to be days that you don't want to are tough, but overall you should love getting up in the morning and coming into the office because if you don't or into the plant, if you don't, then, you know, don't come through those doors because you live and breathe your job for many hours a day. So it's important that you feel good about what you do and you've got accomplishments. Exactly. And we spend so much time in our working lives. We really do. And a lot of, you know, you're with your team members eight to 10 hours a day. Yeah. You don't spend that much time at home. You have to create that environment that's fun and friendly. And you've got a great time at work, which is important because then your day just flies by. That's exactly. So speaking of flying, we're actually heading to Europe this summer. <laughs> and I'm looking to add some great books to my reading lists. Now, I'm not sure if you're an avid reader or if you've got any great books on the go or any recommendations. Yeah, there's several books that in terms of business that I could recommend, but it really depends on the particular individual and what they really like. Sometimes I just like 
trashy, fun, romantic mm-hmm. books. And then at other times I'll read business case studies that could pertain to to our business or to the issues that we've got. So there's many books and it's not just one that I could totally recommend and say, you know, I live and breathe by by that particular book. Yes, no, I agree. Read how I'm feeling too. Sometimes I'm into the total trashy ones too, but I've actually found a few Canadian writers actually that have been quite good. So that's always a nice thing. But yeah, it's, it's nice to support Canadian as much as we can. Absolutely, yes. And so Susan, health and wellness seems to be a very important part of your life. So how do you manage your health and your wellness while running this company? Yeah, health and wellness is extremely important. I'm a true believer in what you put into your body is what you're going to get out. Eating healthy food and having a good diet is extremely important, not for not only for your physique, but also for mental health. Taking the time, whether it's half an hour a day or an hour a day, either working out at a gym or just walking and doing 10,000 steps a day, It's really good for you mentally and it's really helped me, especially during the pandemic. I've always been extremely active and I've also always loved food. So, you know, those 10 pounds creep up or 15 pounds. So how do I bring myself back to where I want to be? Walking or exercising is extremely important and it really gives you time to to think. And again, it's like putting fuel in a car. You're not going in, in an automobile. Now you can with electric cars, but putting that power, whether it's electric or gas in a vehicle, it's same with your body. I think what you put into your body is extremely important. Gut health is extremely important. Being hydrated is extremely important. Eating the proper amounts of fruits and vegetables, grains, legumes is great. But I also love junk food. I love potato chips and we started hummus and dips because I love dips. But how do we get a healthier dip out in the marketplace? So I think a lot of it has to do with balance and what makes you feel good. Right. Now, do you find, though, as an entrepreneur, that balance can be a challenge? And because I'm in the world of mental health, that's part of what else I do. As an entrepreneur, I'm interested to understand mentally, have you ever had challenges with the ebbs and flows that come with the business? People see me and my hair is not done today. They see me with my hair and my nails and my clothes and they're like, oh, life's just so easy. That's just the way they see me. They don't know if I'm like, oh my God, we just lost this account or, oh my God, how are we going to, you know, make this work? So absolutely, you you have your ups and downs and you second guess yourself. Um, But at the end of the day, it's extremely important to talk about things, have a network of girlfriends or a mentor or a support team. And as I said at the beginning of the conversation, it's extremely important to talk about things. And I talk about things. If there's an issue, I talk about it. I, I don't, internalize things. I I think about things. I talk about things. And then at the end of the day, I make that decision. And And as I said, for every successful product, there's been 10 failures. Yeah. And I think that's really important what you're saying that you do get it off your chest because I know a lot of people who can keep it in. And then it's just the smallest thing that's the, what do they say? The hair that breaks the camel's back or something like that. Yeah. The saying? Yes. Okay. Those are really good suggestions in terms of the exercise and the communication and everything. Was there something else you wanted to add? And I think living through the pandemic and seeing a lot of people working from home and being in their own silo, they're not getting out. They're not collaborating. They're not speaking to their peers. They're not getting up, taking a shower, getting dressed, putting that lipstick on and feeling good about themselves. And I think they have to do that. So it's important to go into an office. It's important to meet somebody for lunch or a cup of coffee because you feel a lot better. You're doing it for yourself. And when you're talking to somebody or you're going out to meet somebody, you feel good and your endorphins are increasing, which is extremely important. It's the happy thing. Exactly. And sometimes it just takes those little things to make yourself feel happy again. And so those are really important too. Now, I have a couple of friends who are amazing philanthropists. They do such great work with different charities. Is there a charity that you or that Summer Fresh supports that you feel strongly about? We support several charities, but as we said, health and wellness is extremely important to us. Starting with your body and brain and as a child and an infant it's extremely important that children can eat properly as as it is for the elderly so we really support a lot of uh, charities that cater to young children like sick kids hospital but also um the elderly like elderly homes or retirement homes or an example would be canadian macedonian place we're huge donors to that particular association Wow. I really love that you include the elderly in there because that's a population that's really growing right now. 
And I think there's a lot of need for help and awareness, actually, that it's not necessarily had before. We're all getting older and it's extremely important that we put homes in place and nutrition in place for our bodies at any age, but especially the elderly, because they start to change their, the way they're consuming food and they don't eat as much. And it's, it's important, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, it's, it's that fuel, it's that electricity that is generated for that vehicle to work or that car to move forward. Exactly. So you are really, I, when I think of you, Susan, I think how you started this company, I think you're truly a visionary when it comes to food and the needs of customers. So I'm really curious to know, where do you think things are going? Do you see any trends in new directions when it comes to food and the way people are consuming? Yeah, food is fun and exciting. And with social um, and Instagram and our phones, people are, they all think that they're foodies, that foodies and they're constantly taking pictures of all sorts of exciting Instagrammable, whether it's a drink or a cocktail or a mocktail or a food or a plate. So I think food is just fascinating. I really believe that food is extremely important. It always was and always will be. I think more now more than ever, people are more cautious of what they're consuming and why they're consuming it. Gut health, I think is going to be the next big thing, especially with an aging society. And people are, are much more knowledgeable these days when it comes to food and ingredients. And you can look, you can click into a QR code and see exactly what's in that product and what's good and people are questioning those not so good ingredients so it's extremely important and i think food um is here to stay we need food to to move forward yeah and i truly believe that vitamin the food we consume the way we're cooking the way we're going out and eating is here to stay yes yeah and you're so right about how social media and instagram is coming into everything because So many people are taking pictures of that dinner out or whatever it may be. So it's potentially a great opportunity for marketing, but it could also be maybe tough if your product isn't exactly the way you wanted it to be. Marketing has really changed in the last 30 years. So marketing 101, the way we were taught in school is a little different than it is today. The basics are still there. A lot of people are not reading magazines these days, but have an app and are getting that paperless magazine or that paperless newspaper or looking at food recipes online as opposed to purchasing that, that magazine or that cookbook. Exactly. Absolutely. I know I do that. So Susan, we are coming to the end of our time. Believe it or not, it goes by so fast. But my last question to you is maybe just a little bit of a self-reflection. And that would be, is there any advice you would give to a young Susan? Yeah, I'm a very trusting person because I believe if I say something, then I'll move forward with it. So yeah, just watch your surroundings. If you've got a vision, really create a proper business plan. Easier said than done. But yeah, just be careful of the people you're surrounded with. Yeah, and make sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Good words of wisdom and advice. And again, congratulations on the success that you've had with your company and of course your nomination for the Women Empowerment Awards. And thank you so much for doing this with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. A real pleasure and enjoy your trip to Europe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Women Empowerment Awards podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Gideon. Don't forget to grab your tickets to the After Party Networking event held at the Shangri-La Hotel in Toronto, September 21st. We rise by lifting others. Be well, everyone.